If you thought inflation was bad, just wait. Deflation is coming. I'm sure a lot of people are like, wait a minute, isn't that a good thing? No. It's actually far, far worse. There are going to be folks in a year, maybe two, saying, boy, I wish we could go back to the good old days of 2023 and 2024 when things were expensive. But at least there were things to buy on the shelves. You had to budget and you had to work really, really hard and sometimes take two jobs. But at least it was out there to buy. When the value of the dollar collapses, you watch how fast everything goes away. Now, I'm sure a lot of people right now are laughing and making their jokes about what they think is going to happen in November and how easy it's going to be for President Trump to absolutely destroy Kamala Harris. And she's got all of these inconsistencies. I don't like her either. I'm not a giant fan of either one, to be truthful. But she's playing him. She is letting him get on the record saying and doing things that she is going to turn back on him in a way that he will not be able to answer. He's never faced anyone like her. This whole um, act of being you know, brainless and ditzy, it's a strategy. Wait until I show you something. It has to do with Donald Trump and a bit of uh, ignorance when it comes to geography. It's all over the place what he is saying about her heritage. And if he ever has to confront her directly, he's going to get fact-checked. Whether he debates her on Fox News or the original debate with, um, I don't know whether it was CNN or MSNBC, whoever it is, he's going to get fact-checked on something, and it's going to embarrass him. Now, real quick, Battlefield of the Mind. I'm sure a lot of people out there are already upset, already typing, already have their opinions made up. That's fine. Make up your mind, make your decision, that's the country we live in. But do it in an informed way, with facts, not emotion. Facts, not emotion. There's a lot of people out there right now that are believing they are thinking, when really, they're feeling. They're just going on emotion and believing what they're told. If you'd like to get read in on the basic tactics and techniques to get people into that state, which the media is a master of. It's a master of getting people into a state where they believe they're still thinking when really all they're doing is parroting and expressing emotion. Only one U.S. dollar per month. That's it. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable for 90 days, no questions asked. Hundreds and hundreds of videos. You can watch them from now until Election Day. Watch them from now until Election Day. And if on Election Day you decide, you know what, Florida Maquis, I appreciate what you tried to do. I appreciate all the information, but things have just gotten so bad. I need, I need a refund. Not a problem. All $3, all three months come right back at you. No questions asked. Now let's start here. What's going on right now is biblical. This is Proverbs. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. This is very basic advice, good sound advice for everyone. No matter who they are, hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Meaning, of course, age. And for those of you who might not be so inclined to listen to religious text, here is some advice given in a secular TV show between Game of Thrones, between Tywin Lannister and his grandson Tommen. When his brother had just died, you know it makes a wise king, Tommen. A wise king listens to his counselors. I think we can all probably agree that during Trump's administration, he surrounded himself with some not so very wise counselors. There are a lot of people he brought in, including his own vice president, that at least he believes and his supporters believe didn't serve him well. And that's what's going on right now. He is surrounded by some very bad counselors. It doesn't excuse him. It doesn't excuse him, but it's going to end up hurting him. Now, those of you that would like to watch this scene, it's only four, it's less than four minutes. The conversation between Tywin Lannister and his grandson, Tommen, in Game of Thrones, it's on YouTube for free. You don't got to subscribe to nothing. 
Um, Tywin and Tommen scene, What Makes Good King, Game of Thrones, Season 4, Episode 3, Breaker of Chains. It is, an, it is probably the most excellent three and a half minutes in the entire series. You could play this um, back a hundred years from now, and it would still be just as good. Now, what am I talking about? I've been seeing memes and representative things like this all over the internet, all over social media, that Kamala Harris, because one parent was Indian and the other parent was Jamaican, that she can't claim to be African. That just goes to show ignorance. It shows ignorance of history, and it shows ignorance of fact. Florida Maquis, Jamaican and Indian African are different. No, they're not. Jamaican and African are not different. Facts first. Facts first. Yes, most Jamaicans are of sub-Saharan African descent. According to a 2006 census, 90% of Jamaicans are of West African origin, with many tracing their ancestry back to slaves from Ghana. The first Africans arrived in Jamaica in 1513 as servants to Spanish settlers, and the colonists were perf- were impressed by performance and endurance, and what, what have we seen, Usain Bolt, and many others. Now, how many of you would deny, over to the right, that Patrick Ewing is African American, is black? Well, guess what? He's Jamaican too. No, he's not. Flip. Yes, he is. Look it up. Guess who else is? Mike Tyson. No way. That's right. Usain Bolt, Patrick Ewing, Mike Tyson. Are they, are none of them black? Would you say that they have no claim to be uh, black Americans or African Americans? Look it up. See, she knows this, but she's going to let Trump run his mouth. And she's going to let all of his supporters get on record. And then she's going to drop this hammer. And look it up. Look up Jamaicans. You can look up Afro-Jamaicans, however you want to look at. They're the vast majority of Jamaicans. And here are a few more. Usain Bolt, Bob Marley, Shaggy, Harry Belafonte, another boxer, Trevor Burbick, Patrick Ewing. The list goes on. Sheila Jackson Lee. How many of you know the politician Sheila Jackson Lee? How many of you, for those of you who are maybe more entertainment-oriented, I didn't watch this series, I heard of it, called 90 Day Fiancé. Melanie, age 33, Orwigsburg, Pennsylvania, and her fiancé, Devar, age 28, from Runaway Bay, Jamaica. Now, if you saw this couple, would you say, well, that's that's not an African-American? That's That's not a black person. Would you say that? Would you say that? No. Ladies, be honest. How many of you either have or know some group of ladies that took their hall pass separate vacation weekends or weeks or whatever, two weeks, in Jamaica to go, I guess, experience the culture, for lack of a better term? There's an entire genre. Well, I'm not going to get into the genre of something else. But I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Even, and congratulations to Nicole Arbor. Nicole Arbor and Simon Skygrass Bowden announced engagement. Guitar player. Every, you know, person out there has their, their type and they have those that they fall in love with. And God bless them all. But just to go down the list, um, just in sports alone, um, Andre Drummond, oh, Colin Powell, Floyd Mayweather. I mean, you can go down, look this up. It's a, it's a wiki. List of Jamaican Americans. Sheila Jackson Lee, Busta Rhymes, Heavy D, Sean Kingston, the notorious B.I.G., Shaggy, all of them are Jamaicans. Are they not allowed to say that they're black Americans? Are they not allowed to say that they're African Americans? Of course they have. Now, 
on an entirely different subject. If this gets played, this is going to be a tough one. This was back in 2004. Those of you who think this is way, way, way back in the day. This is back in 2004. It's only 20 years ago. This is right before his youngest son was born, Baron. In an interview with CNN, it just seems that the economy does better under the Democrats than the Republicans. Now, what a lot of people don't take away from this is, this is Donald Trump speaking, him being in real estate, he hated it when Republicans took office and they cut taxes. Why did he hate that? Because a lot of very, very wealthy people put their money into a tax shelter to keep from having to pay the super high top marginal rates that the Democrats put into place. Now, why is that a bad thing for Donald Trump? Well, one of those tax shelters was real estate. And when the Democrats came into office and they raised up those top marginal rates on the top 1%, money flew into real estate because it was a tax shelter. You maintained the wealth, you maintained the, the value of the money without it being taxed. And the more money you put into real estate and in developing real estate, the better your money did. And what did that do to the value of real estate? Well, when people are buying up properties left and right to keep from having to pay taxes on the money, what happens? Well, of course, just like basic free market 101, the available amount of real estate craters driving up what's left. And this guy being a real estate guy hated it when Republicans cut taxes. There's a whole video out there of Donald Trump testifying to Congress about how bad an idea it was for Ronald Reagan to cut taxes way back in back in the 80s. Because it was personally financially bad for Donald Trump at the time. And so when he says the re the economy does better under the Democrats than the Republicans, saying that in 2004, he was only talking about two different people. He was talking about his best friend, his good buddy, his super pal, lifelong aficionado, slick willy, Bill Clinton. He was talking about Bill Clinton versus Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan came in and cut tax rates across the board, and for the average American, it was a huge relief, but for big, rich billionaires like Donald Trump and real estate guys, it was catastrophic. He hated it. Then guess what happened? Reagan left office. There was four years of Bush Sr. And then Clinton came into office. Guess what Clinton did? The ninja loans. That's right. Remember the ninja loans? No income, no job, no assets. The reason we had the 2008 crisis under Bush Jr.? Under W, that was a direct result of what Bill Clinton did. Now, think about this logically for a minute. You give out a whole bunch of loans to a whole bunch of people to buy up a bunch of property. What happens to the value of property? That's right, the available property goes down. And when the availability of something goes away, the price of it goes up. Once again, Donald Trump confirmed. So, you know, what Reagan did hurt Mr. Trump, and what Clinton did helped Mr. Trump financially. And the last one, and this is, well, that was a long time ago. This was during the Trump administration, and we are at 14 minutes, and I know this is going to be kind of a dry read, but those of you out there who are watching the markets, watching what's happening now, you need to read this. I'm going to read it for you. You don't have to, you know, watch me, you know, the rest of the way. If you don't want to, if you don't want to listen to me, read it. But I'm going to read it just so that I have it in my library of things that I covered. This goes back all the way to August 5th, 2019. This is the end of the Trump administration. Initially, Trump had said in his contract with America First hundred days, he was going to designate China a currency manipulator, and then he backed out and he flip flopped on that, and said he wasn't going to do it. It was oh, it was many years, see, 2016, 17, 18, 19. It was the third year of his administration. End of it. That Manukin finally did it. Manukin finally stepped in and said we need to do this. 
But the reasons and what was going on, I think, are going to give you a lot of insight into what's happening now. So let's go. Here we go. 8-5, 2019. The United States took the rare step on Monday of formally labeling, labeling pardon me, China a currency manipulator as trade relations between the two countries continue to spiral downward after President Donald Trump's decision last week to impose additional tariffs on Chinese goods. Quote, in recent days, China has taken concrete steps to devalue its currency while maintaining substantial foreign exchange reserves despite active use of such tools in the past. The Treasury Department said in a statement that followed the People's Bank of China's decision to let its currency, the renminbi, fall to the lowest level in more than a decade. The U.S. Treasury, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin made the determination acting, quote, under the auspices of President Trump, end quote. The department said Mnuchin will now engage, like once again, quote, engage with the International Monetary Fund to eliminate the unfair competitive advantage created by China's latest action. Previous administrations have been loathed to label China a currency manipulator, arguing it was better to work with other countries to put diplomatic pressure on Beijing. The last time Treasury designated any country as a currency manipulator, pay attention here, pay attention, was in the early 1990s, I wonder who was president then, when China was named. During the 2016 presidential campaign, Trump promised to formally label China as a currency manipulator on his first day in office, but he declined to do that after it was in his contract that he said he would, reflecting the prevailing view at the time that Beijing was not devaluing its currency for an unfair trade advantage. Since then, the Treasury Department has kept China on a currency watch list in five semi-annual reports issued under the Trump administration, but had not formally labeled it a currency manipulator. The next report is due on October 15th of, this would have been 2019, but Mnuchin acted ahead of schedule. The trade tensions had already driven stocks lower Monday before the Treasury's designation. Both the Dow Jones and the S&P fell 3%, extending losses from last week. Now, you see, this is directly antithetical to what Trump said was going on during his presidency. He said, oh, the stock market was great and everything was fantastic going up. This is 2019. 3% loss. Today was like 2, 2.5 in America. Extending losses from last week. Soybean prices were also under pressure at the Chicago Board of Trade. The penalties associated with the U.S.'s move include asking the IMF to increase surveillance of Chinese China, China's currency practices. The United States could also deny Chinese companies access to financing from the Overseas Private Investment Corporation and prohibit them from bidding on U.S. government procurement contracts, but those do not kick until after a year under the authorizing statute, so that would have been after he left office. However, the Commerce Department has previously proposed treating undervalued currencies as an illegal trade subsidy. If that becomes final, Treasury's designation can help open the floodgates to a number of trade remedies cases seeking countervailing duties on Chinese goods. Now, Trump has talked about this extensively recently. Treasury's action is more symbolic than anything at this point and aimed at Trump's hardcore political base that he will need to shore up now that the economy is broadly decelerating in part due to the trade conflict. This is an article from August of 2019. The big lie being told by Donald Trump is that, oh, it's COVID that caused the downturn in the economy. It was COVID that caused it. The economy was already in a state of crash prior to COVID. This was, when was this? Let me see, be very clear. I think it's August. August 5th, 2019. This was already the case. Marks the start of a process. Is more symbolic than anything at this point and aimed at Trump's hardcore political base that he will need to shore up now that the economy is broadly decelerating in part due to the trade con conflict, said Joe Brasuelas, chief economist at RSM. Moreover, it marks the start of a process that may end in the Trump administration attempting to devalue the dollar. That possibility was also on the minds of other economists 
given Trump's concern that the strength of the dollar hurts the United States in international trade by making its exports more expensive. Quote, China will view this as unjustified and therefore is likely to retaliate, thereby signaling further tension escalation, said Mohammed El Arian, chief economic advisor at Allianz. It signals a new step in the weaponization of economic instruments, also raising the probability of both trade and currency wars. Some feared a replay of the disastrous... Re- Let me see if I can speak English. Some feared a replay of the disastrous replay of U.S. actions under the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act in the 1930s and tit-for-tat responses by other countries that many blame for prolonging the Great Depression. Quote, no doubt about it, we witnessed the two largest economies in the world in full economic trade currency war, and this gets worse before it stabilizes. David Kotak, Chairman and Chief Investment Officer at Cumberland Advisors, said in an email, recession risk rising, smoot Holly replay now underway. The U.S. move came after Beijing fired back at Trump's decision to slap tariffs on more Chinese goods by halting purchases of U.S. farm products and letting its currency weaken to 7 yuan to the dollar. The president's decision last week to impose a new 10% tariff on $300 billion worth of Chinese goods was, quote, a serious violation of the agreement between Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping at a meeting in Osaka, Japan, on June 29. China will not rule out import tariffs on newly purchased U.S. agricultural products after August 3, and Chinese-related companies have suspended purchasing U.S. agricultural products. The statement said the stronger dollar relative to the Chinese currency will further hurt U.S. exports there. Trump announced the latest round of tariffs after his trade negotiators returned from talks last week in Shanghai, frustrated that China had not made any new proposals in negotiations aimed at resolving U.S. concerns over Beijing's trade practices and industrial policies. The new duties are scheduled to take effect on September 1 unless the two sides are able to patch things up before then. But on Monday, that possibility seemed increasingly remote. Hours before the Chinese Commerce Ministry announcement, Trump was already upset with the decision by the People's Bank of China to allow the value of the yuan, officially known as the renminbi, to fall. China dropped the price of their currency to an almost historic low. And of course, here is the tweet. Currency manipulation, listing Federal Reserve, major violation, greatly weaken China over time. August 5, 2019. U.S. officials had no immediate comment on the Chinese Commerce Ministry's statement. However, U.S. farm sales to China are already down sharply this year as a result of the trade war. More confirmation that the whole Trump economy being super fantastic until COVID was a lie. The U.S. Agriculture Department has forecast American farm exports to China at just $6.5 billion in fiscal 2019, which ends September 30. That's down from $16.3 billion in 2018, and from the more than $20 billion annually during Barack Obama's administration. Trump, also been heaping pressure on the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates to boost the U.S. economy. Last week, the Fed cut its key interest rate by a quarter of a point, citing the uncertainty caused by Trump's trade policies as one reason for the move. Lower interest tends to drive down the value of the dollar. Now, here is kind of the the thing with tariffs. A lot of people think tariffs are a big help. They're not. Economists disagree with the administration's view of the tariff impact. They note the duties are actually paid by U.S. importers rather than the Chinese government. And that's actually the case. A U.S. business and agricultural group coalition under the name Tariffs Hurt the Heartland called on the countries to return immediately to the negotiating table before more U.S. farmers, workers, and small businesses are further hurt by the conflict. So I guess I will leave it there. This is basically just a lot of reiteration of what we covered earlier. But this is what's happening now. This was 2019, the end of the Trump administration, and the economy was in a state of shit. 
prior to the arrival of COVID. Things were going badly, quickly. And everybody forgot about it. Finding this article was like basically striking gold, so to speak. But make no mistake, they've kept the receipts. They've kept the receipts and they'll have the facts. And if he has to face her in a debate and he tries to keep up with all of these ridiculous lies, number one, about her heritage, number two, about her being a flip-flopper is hilarious. Her being a flip-flopper is hilarious, said the once Democrat, then Republican, then Reform Party, then Democrat, then Republican again, Donald Trump. I mean, and if you want to bring up the whole thing about uh, her young life and her ambition, so to speak, and who she decided to spend her personal time with, who she decided to spend her personal time with to advance herself, is a guy with how many, five kids by three wives and one mistress going to really bring that up? I know when you watch a lot of the right wing stuff, they uh, they paint her out like an easy target, but he knows better. So I will leave it there. Battlefield of the mind. You got to have the facts. You've got to have the facts. And look at them dispassionately. Once again, look, I know a lot of people are like, well, you must love to come out. I don't. I don't. At this point, I can't. Uh, what I know about both of them dis- disqualifies both of them. This is going to be one where, you know, thinking people are going to sit this, sit this one out. But if you think some debate's going to be a whitewash with him, be, it's not going to be. And I think that's what he knows. Well, once again, love to have you at the Patreon channel. Very, very much appreciate it. Could sure use it these days, boy. I tell you what, things are getting rough, but you guys are stepping in there, standing in the breach, making the difference. Those of you who have signed up, God bless all of you. Thank you so much. It's making a difference. It's making a real difference. I very much appreciate it. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.